Welcome to our lecture today where we'll be talking about atrial fibrillation rate control. Please make sure that after watching this video you will like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. In this video I will not mention anything about rhythm control. For AFib rate control, all the medications that we use depend on their activity as an AV nodal blocking agents. And they can be beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, we also have digoxin. I will speak about each of those medications and I will be mentioning the most common medications that we use in clinical practice. For beta blockers, the medications that we use, one of them is called metoprolol. Metoprolol, you can use it as PO, IV, and IV piggyback. The good thing about metoprolol is that it's short acting. You can start with a dose of 25 Q6 hours, and then whenever the patient becomes stable, you can change it to a BID dosing. If you want to use IV, IV push, or IV piggyback, Usually you can um, order metoprolol IV 2.5 or 5 milligrams or 10 milligrams according to how much AV blockade you need. You can start with two and a half and see how it goes and go up the dose. We cannot use metoprolol as an IV drip. Metoprolol tartrate, which is the short acting medication, may drop your blood pressure, but it's not that much. The other medication that we can use as a beta blocker is carvedilol, but we don't like it in the setting of AFib because we don't have it as an IV option and also there is no flexibility, so we just stick to metoprolol. Other physicians may use labetalol. Remember that labetalol has an alpha-1 antagonist, so the blood pressure will go down. And that might be one reason why we don't like to use it in this category. If patients are not able to take PO, you have the option to put an NG tube in and use metoprolol, or you might end up using an IV medication. And you probably have heard of esmolol. Esmolol is very short acting, so it is only done in a drip form, IV push and drip form. Whenever you want to switch it to PO, you will have to use metoprolol as the other agent. In relation to calcium channel blockers, the calcium channel blockers that we use are the non-dihydropyridine, which act on the heart. There are two, deltaism and verapamil. We don't use verapamil as much in this setting, so you will only see deltaism. Deltaism can be used PO, IV push, and drip. The starting dose for the PO is 30 milligrams Q6 hours. For the drip, you can start from 5 until 20 milligrams per hour. For the IV push, you can push with 5, 10, 15, 20, usually depending on the weight of the patient. And usually they say you can do a bolus of 0.2 milligram per kg. So if someone is 100 kilograms, that will end up with 20 milligrams IV push. How to use this medication? Usually, you give a push, which is based on the weight, and then you can start a drip. So for example, I gave a patient who's 100 kilograms, 20 milligrams push, and then I started the drip at five milligrams an hour, and at the same time, I will start the PO regimen. And by the time the PO regimen gets absorbed, you will see that you might be able to wean off the drip. Some patients might need more 
of the drip and then you will see that 5 milligram kind of corresponds to 30 milligram Q6 if you're on 10 that corresponds to 60 Q6 15 that's going to be 90 Q6 and 20 is probably 120 Q6 one of the most common mistakes that physicians do is that their patient is requiring a lot of deltaism let's say 15 milligram per hour and they start them on 30 Q6 well what happens is that they will end up requiring still drip and their length of stay will increase just because they're using a lower dose so always make sure that you're reasonable with the numbers deltaism is a strong medication and will have a stronger effect on the AV node. So deltaism is stronger than metoprolol. But the problem that we face is that if your patient's EF is low, you don't want to use that because this will depress contractility and the patient might end up in heart failure due to that. The other medication that we can use is digoxin or also known as digitalis. Some people call it lanoxin. The good thing about digoxin is that it can be done as PO and IV. Digoxin needs to be loaded. And one other thing that you have to know about digoxin is that it has a narrow therapeutic index. So always make sure that you check the creatinine. Physicians may not use this as common as it was done um, in the 80s and in the 90s just because people tend to use beta blockers and calcium channel blockers more but sometimes you might end up using digoxin and the way to do it for the loading dose uh, they usually do 0.5 milligram followed by 0.25 milligrams followed by another 0.25 milligrams all of those are within six hours each apart so 0.5 now 0.25 and 6 hours from the first dose and another 0.25 milligrams in 6 hours from the last dose so over 24 hours you have 1 milligram now next day you can start the maintenance dose if the creatinine is okay probably you can go to 0.25 milligrams daily and if the creatinine is not okay you can do 0.125 milligrams daily depending on the creatinine and you can look up up to date to see what the appropriate dose is the good thing about digoxin is that it does not depress contractility it actually increases contractility it's because it increases the intracellular calcium The reason why many physicians don't use it anymore other than the fact that we have other agents is because some patients are left on this medication as outpatient and then they end up with digoxin toxicity. A lot of physicians don't have much experience with digoxin and are no longer used to ordering the levels for digoxin to make sure that the patient is not in a toxic level. But one thing that I have recognized is um, physicians, especially resident physicians, order levels when they are in the acute phase of loading. And that usually gives them a high number and they stop using it. But I don't think we should order levels in the acute setting. We hardly ever use digoxin as uh, monotherapy. So usually uh, physicians use it in addition to metoprolol or oldeltaism and uh, they use it just for a short while um, different hospitals do it different way but some would just use it for the loading dose and will not do a maintenance dose those are the medications that we use for afib rate control you can use one of them or sometimes you might need to do two of them always remember that whenever you do a beta blocker with a calcium channel blocker that increases the chance of a negative inotropy and this might put your patient into heart failure if you have enjoyed watching this video don't forget to like it 
share it with your colleagues and subscribe to our channel.